Hello. Character rigging can be difficult, especially at the skinning part. In this video, I will show you a quick and easy way to bind skin and properly set the skin weight and get your character ready for animation. First, create the skeletons for your character. You can reference my another video about how to properly set the skeletons. My model has a dress that will be animated separately using the end cloth, so I don't have to rig it for now. Select the mesh, hold the shift key and add the hip joint. Go to rigging, skin, bind skin. In the tool setting, set bind to joint hierarchy and keep everything else as default. The bind skin tool will give you a start point on the rigging. However, the machine cannot get the details for you. Let's take a look at the problems that need to be fixed. The chest needs to stay still when we rotating the arm joints. The fingers need a lot of works. The spine joint needs some work. The same as the head and the neck joint. See that the shoulder mesh moves when I rotate the head joint and that is not supposed to happen. The lower jaw was squashed when I rotate the head joint. The lower spine joints are working okay. When I rotate the left thigh joint, the right leg mesh was stretched. The same thing happened on the feet. When rotating the left foot joint, the right foot mesh distorted. First, we will use the paint skin weight tool to fix some of the problems. Let's start on the head. The reason that the lower jaw was twisted when rotating the head joint is, the head joint only has a portion of control on the head mesh. Select the mesh and go to skin, paint skin weight. Open the tool setting. In the influences window, select the head joint. The mesh that influenced or controlled by the head joint will mark in colors. White means 100% influence. Gray means portion influence, and black means no influence. It's hard to tell the influences by the luminance, so I recommend turn on the use color ramp. The head mesh only has green and yellow colors, so that means the head joint only has about 40 to 50% influences on it. We will increase its influence. Use the add mode and set value to 1. Use the solid brush and increase the stroke radius. This will paint pure white color on the head mesh, which means add 100% influence to the head joint. Make sure to paint the small areas in the ears and eyes. The head joint should have full control of the painted vertices. Switch to the smooth tool and smooth the transition between the head mesh and the neck mesh. Here I'd like to add more influence underneath the lower jaw.
use the replace tool and paint a lower value between the head and the neck. Then, use the smooth tool to smooth the transition again. Let's test how it looks. The upper neck looks too hard. We'll soften it a little bit. Select both the head joint and the neck joint and soften their influences in that area. That area still needs some work. Now it looks much better. The shoulder joints look good. The blue area has minor influences from the joint, but no more than 3% of influences. The yellow and green area has a smooth transition, and that keeps the shoulder mesh look soft when rotating the shoulder joint. The upper arm joint looks okay. I will increase its influence in the center area. Select the replace mode, set the value to 99%. Paint at the center area to increase the joint's influence. Select the forearm joint and paint 99% influences in the center area. Select a hand joint, decrease the size of the stroke. Paint more influences at the center of the palm. All fingers are distorted when rotating the finger joints. That's due to the finger joints and finger meshes are too close to each other and their influences crossed. With the paint skin weight tool turned on, you can see that each joint has influences on multiple fingers. On the finger that the joint is not supposed to control, some areas are marked in green color and that's more than 30% influences. We can use the paint weight tool to fix it, but that's too much work to do. Let's use another way to fix the skin weight on the fingers. Hide the joints. Go to vertex mode. 
select the vertices on the thumb fingertip. Hit the shift key and the greater than sign to expand the selection. We want only the thumb joints to be able to influence the selected vertices. Go to Window, General Editors, Component Editor. Go to the Smooth Skins menu. On the left side are the vertices we selected. On the top are the joints that influence these vertices. The numbers are the joints influences on each vertex. We can see that the hand joint, the index finger joint, and the middle finger joint has influences on these vertices, and that causes the distortions on the thumb. We will remove those joints influences. Select the joints influences on all vertices. Type 0. Now, those joints influences have transferred to the thumb joints, with a total of 1. Let's test and see how it looks. By rotating the index finger joints, all vertices on the thumb finger stay still now. Select the vertices on the index fingertip. Hit the shift key and the greater than sign to expand the selection. We can see that these vertices have influences from the hand joint, the index finger joints, the middle finger joints, and the ring finger joints. That's because the index finger and two close to other fingers and the joints influences crossed. Zero out the influences from the hand joint. Zero out the influences from the middle finger joints and the ring finger joints. Now, we've transferred their influences to the index finger joints. Select the vertices on the middle fingertip. Hit the shift key and the greater than sign to expand the selection. Go to the Smooth Skins tab. Zero out the influences from the hand joint and the index finger joints. The vertices still have influences from the pinky joints and ring finger joints. Zero out the influences from the pinky finger joint and the ring finger joints. Now, only the middle finger joints have influences on the middle finger mesh. Select the vertices on the ring fingertip. Hit the shift key and the greater than sign to expand the selection. Go to the Smooth Skins tab. We can see that all fingers received influences from other fingers' joints. Zero out the influences from the hand joint the middle finger joints, and the pinky finger joints. Select the vertices on the pinky fingertip. Hit the shift key and the greater than sign to expand the selection. Go to the Smooth Skins tab.
zero out the influences from the hand joint, the middle finger joint. Zero out the influences from the ring finger joints. Now, let's test how it looks. The pinky finger works great. The middle finger is good. The thumb finger is good as well. All joints on the index finger are good. There's no distortion at all no matter what gesture we pose. Show the influences of the chest joints. At the center of the chest, we will add more influences. Use the replace brush and paint with the value set to 0.99. Use the smooth brush to smooth the influences. The first spine joint looks good. It only has about 40% influence on the chest mesh, but that's fine since this joint isn't supposed to rotate a lot. However, the second spine joint needs more influence on the mesh. It is located on the waist and will rotate in a big range. Use the replace brush and set the value to about 70%. Paint the influences on the back and on the side, since this area stretches a lot. Use the smooth brush to smooth the transitions. Test and see how it looks. The hip joint needs more control around the belly and in the back. Use the replace brush and paint with the value set about 70%. Then, increase the value to about 90% and paint in the center. Then, set value to 99% and paint in the core area. Use the smooth brush to smooth the transitions.
Add influences if necessary. Test and see how it looks. By rotating the thigh joint, the stretch on the torso looks great. When rotating the left thigh joint, you can see that the right leg has been stretched. That's because the leg meshes and leg joints are getting too close with each other and the influence is crossed. Some vertices on the right leg even have about 40% influence from the left thigh joint. Same as the fingers. In this scenario, even if we use the paint skin weight tool, it is still hard to fix the weight entirely. We will use the component editor to remove the influences from the unrelated joints, but we need to decide from which edge loop should we select and remove influences. We should only remove influences on the vertices below the buttocks. Otherwise, when rotating the legs we may have the hard mesh issue on the buttocks and make the animation look unnatural. Select the vertices on the left foot. Hit the shift key and the greater than sign to expand the selection. I kept a distance between my selection and the buttocks in order to have a smooth transition in this area. Go to Window, General Editors, Component Editor. Go to the Smooth Skins menu. I assume the hips joint only has influences on the vertices close to the buttocks, so that's fine. Here are the joints on the left leg, each control a range of vertices. The joints from the right leg should not have any influence on these vertices. The spine joint only influences the vertices close to the buttocks, so that's fine as well. Zero out the influence from the right leg joints. It transferred the weight back to the joints on the left leg. Let's double check the influences from the spine and the hips joints. The spine joint only influences very few vertices that are close to the butts, and have very minimum influences, like 0.004. The same as the hips joints. This minor influence will soften the thigh a little bit and make the leg movement look more natural. Select the vertices on the right foot and hit the shift key and the greater than sign to expand the selection. Go to the Component Editor, Smooth Skins menu. Zero out the influences from the left leg joints, and it will transfer the influences back to the joints on the right leg. Now, when rotating one leg, the other leg should stay still. Around the buttocks area, the mesh also stretched evenly and looks natural. The feet look great as well. Finally, we are moving on to the eyeballs and eyelashes. Both meshes haven't rigged to any skeleton. Select the eyeball mesh. Then, add both eye joints and selections. Go to Bind Skin. In the setting, set Bind to Selected Joints and keep everything else as the default. The eye joints should have full control of each eyeball, and we don't have to do any skin painting on them. The eyelashes are supposed to be a part of the head mesh and should follow the head movement so we can rig them to the head joint.
select the eyelashes and select the head joint. Go to bind skin. In the setting, set bind to selected joints. Both eyeball and eyelashes are following the head movement and we are still able to control the eyeball separately with the eye joints. Now, you have a fully rigged character with correct skin weight. For the next step, reference my other video about how to create IC and FK controllers on your character and pack your character for animation.